Look, guys, we have to have this conversation. Uh, too much going on on X. I have to put this out there. I know the broad majority of people in this market, they don't have the time of day to study this stuff. They get hit with FUD and then they look the other way. I like to look FUD directly in the eye. I like to get down into it, see what is actual. Is there any substance to the FUD, right? I posted uh, the other day, I posted a video of Sergey from Link and uh, talking to Andrew Crawford of Franklin Templeton. Uh, we, we know Franklin Templeton to be a, a forward leaning into this market. They're already tokenizing money market funds. They've tokenized on Stellar. They're gonna be making tokenization funds on multiple chains, right? And so I posted about uh, the conversation that we're having was about asset to asset payments, uh, atomic swaps, global atomic swaps and if you've been following my channel you know that's something that ripple and the xrp ledger has the ability to do as well and i've also speculated that david schwartz and jazzy cooper and the team at ripple are actually going to be solving for token portability we're not talking about just uh bridging token to another chain right in a wrapped version or something like that we're actually talking about legitimate token portability, taking one token and moving it to another chain. And I think they're going to do that with Squid Router and the XRP Ledger Super Dex functionality. And I have multiple videos showcasing this. We have videos from Jazz, uh, Jasmine Cooper at ETH Rio giving the presentation about how this is done. She uses the example of a Disney uh, creating a token or a game on Polygon that needs a certain token from another blockchain that they could source it and have the XRP ledger be a uh, liquidity layer, right? A venue for liquidity. So you have to think of all these different blue chip blockchains uh, that have different use cases, different dApps, different games built on them, different functionalities. They all need certain things and they're th these DEXs are essentially going to play the part of a centralized exchange, but in the decentralized world. So this is a massive use case for this technology. And you're not going to understand this quite well, unless you really are in the technical weeds of blockchain. And I mean, really in depth in blockchain to understand that there's a macro cluster or a macro cluster of blockchains. So we're, now we're dealing with hundreds of blockchains, if not thousands of blockchains, all interacting together and they all need uh, to be able to uh, securely transmit data to each other. They need to be able to transact with each other. We need oracles. We need all this online to make this macro cluster of blockchains, this neuroelectronic network to be able to communicate with each other and to be able to have uh, enforce regulations and policy throughout this. So we're talking about this uh, neuro network of blockchains, right? I call it the macro cluster of blockchains. Let me close my door here. There's a loud truck. So the macro cluster of blockchain, all right? <clears throat> so there's a few uh, linking, like a chain link or like an Axelar or a flare network that are going to be linking and connecting all of these networks, all of these different uh, critical infrastructure networks, these blue chip layer ones, so they can all work together along with the public hybrid blockchains, okay? Um, <clears throat> but what we haven't solved is token portability. And I think David Schwartz and the team at Ripple are gonna be solving this problem with the super decks, right? So the super decks have essentially Take the XRP ledger as a DEX, as you know, using it for its central limit order book and its uh, automated market maker. Then you have all these multiple different blockchains with different functionalities that need certain tokens from each other in order to enact this massive macro cluster of blockchains to be able to fire off in the you know hundreds of thousands of transactions each second. And so what's happening? with the SuperDex function and Axelar partnership is I believe they are going to solve token portability through this. So when, if this chain needs something from this chain, it can route down, grab it on the XRP ledger and actually route the token itself 
to the other blockchain. So this is something that has not been done before. All right, so in this macro cluster blockchain, you're going to need multiple versions of this. And so we're seeing this new market emerge. I'm calling it the liquidity venue market, right? A These aggregated liquidity layers that are going to solve for siloed liquidity, right? Chainlink, I love Chainlink to death. They're doing massive things. I'm a massive investor in Chainlink. They're going to succeed. But we also need to understand the original problem with the financial system that blockchain set out to solve was siloed liquidity. We're breaking down the walls. We're breaking down the silos and aggregating liquidity at the infrastructure level. So chains like the XRP ledger are built for this, right? The XRP ledger itself is the first ever DEX. And I believe similar to how Ethereum was the first ever smart contract platform, the XRP ledger will gain success because they are first to market on this, all right? So we know Ethereum isn't the best technology out there, right? There's other blockchains that can do what Ethereum does better, but Ethereum remains dominant. Why? Because they have achieved what is called a network effect. Everyone's using it because everyone's using it, okay? So until that, cha until that changes, which it probably never will, that's Ethereum is the go-to, okay? We can't deny that. They have billions among billions of dollars in total value locked. Um, now, the XRP Ledger in this new liquidity venue space, I believe will take that role similar to an Ethereum for smart contracts, but the original DEX functionality will be for the XRP Ledger. There are other blockchains with central limit order books and automated market maker functions that are faster at transacting but the XRP ledger has something that nobody else has. They have Ripple. They have all these different tokenization abilities. They have multi-purpose tokens. All right. So the XRP ledger is front and center. They stand apart from the rest of this world. So if you understand what I'm saying, we are still going to need a layer of liquidity, whether that be for traditional finance or blockchains. The same problem that Ripple set out to solve in traditional finance is now emerging in the blockchain space. What is it? Say it with me. Fragmented liquidity. What does a DEX do? It is a central hub for liquidity. All right. That is the beauty of it. Ripple is a one-stop shop. They have custody, payments, tokenization, and DeFi. So that's why I remain highly convicted about the XRP ledger and Ripple's endeavors. I remain highly convicted about Chainlink. I remain highly convicted, convicted about Axelar, Flare. All the blue chip blockchains need each other. They're all a little different. They all have unique services. XRP and XLM are not in a battle. Okay. They all need each other. We have to start thinking. This is a macro cluster, hundreds of blockchains, all interacting, all with their own special little service. So that's what this is about. I hope you guys understand. If you don't understand, I teach this stuff in my private group. All the links are in the bio. I teach about automated market making, DeFi, stablecoin DeFi, all of that. We're doing this for real. If you need somebody that is serious about this, that dedicates their life to this, I'm your guy. Links are in the bio. See you guys on the next one.